Hey guys, so here's a huge project I've been working on for a while now, and as you can see by the title, I'm hoping to provide a more definitive answer of old alarms versus new alarms and which one's loudest. So what I did was I've grabbed 16 modern alarms, well, modern, and 16 antique slash vintage alarms. I've paired them up against each other where I'm going to set one off individually, each one off individually with a decibel reader at 10 feet away to definitively see which one is louder. So yeah, I tried to pair up some unique alarms and got a little mix of everything. It's a little hard and when I go through the devices here, I'll uh, explain why. So I'll try to keep this quick because there's a lot to go through. So up here, we'll start off with the modern. I have a Potter 120 volt bell, PBA 1206, uh, 126, 120 volt bell. Um, this is a modern alarm. You'll see these tired in with sprinkler systems typically. And, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool bell. And I think it's a good representation for six inch bells. Beside it is a wheel lock bell. I forget the model number of these motor bells. Basically made of pot steel. Um, I want to say it's like 43G6 or something like that. No, MBG6. That's what it is. This is a 24-volt DC bell. And, uh, yeah. This one, there's a little caveat with this one. The, I don't have any modern 10-inch bells. This is the closest thing to a modern bell I have. This is a 2901-9333. I think these were introduced, like, late 80s through the 90s. So, uh, yeah. This should be pretty cool to see, though. It is... Pretty close to what these modern bells are made of, though. So, yeah. This is another one that's kind of a stretch for modern because this device, I think this particular one, is 22 years old. It's a system sensor P2475. I think it's from 2001. I'm not entirely sure, though. I'm bad with these dates. This is the older uh, strobe design, by the way. But these are still pretty prevalent in a lot of places I tend to shop at or visit. So, that's kind of why I have it here. System sensor L series, uh, Spectre Alert. This is the current system sensor device, and this one's the ceiling mount version. Um, yeah, this one, I'm not sure what it's from, what year it's from, but I'll show you the uh, back of it real quick if I can focus, there we go. PC2R, okay. And uh, there's the date code, it's that little number. I'm sure someone out there knows how to decode that. So uh, yeah. Next up, another kind of a stretch. This is a Simplex True Alert. This particular one is a 4903-9425. This is one of those ones that you don't need any Simplex hardware to run. It'll just run regardless. Um, when it, sim it does have a date code, but because it's Simplex, there's no figuring that out. <laughs> so I would guess 2002 off that, but uh, yeah. This one is uh, would have started out in life as a Gentex Commander 3. This one is a more rare general notification variant. I think the only difference is the color and the strobe. This is a GECB-24PWW. This one's dated April of 2008. And uh, yeah, there's the inside and the model number. My camera does not like focusing. This is hard to do one-handed too. Um, system sensor, Spectralert Advanced. This is a PC2R. This one I saved from a dumpster. This one's in rough shape, though. Um, the date is kind of worn off there. It's a little hard to make out, so not sure what year that one's from. And, uh, yeah, this is extremely loud, too. All of them are, so this should be pretty fun. Did I mention that? <laughs> All right. Um, Wheelock CH70. This is a chime strobe. I wanted, like I said, I'm trying to get a nice variety of modern and vintage, so I did a chime. That one's from 2014, so that one's one of the newer ones. I think only three or four of these are actually from the 2010s. Most of these are 2000s. But you can still see just about all of these around today. This is a pretty cool one I haven't shown yet. This is from Cooper Wheelock. This is one of their newer devices. This is a low frequency sounder. It's model LLFHN from 2015. It has some selectable codes such as like carbon monoxide code four, that quick, that rapid four beeps, uh, code three, and then continuous. I have it set to continuous. All these devices are set to high volume continuous, so 
just to give them as fair a chance as possible. Wheelock MT, they introduced this back in the early 90s, but this particular one is one of the more recent ones with the MCW strobe. It's the model number and it's from 2007, as you can see. So as far as I'm concerned, that'll count. <laughs> I don't have too many modern devices. Wheelock AS, uh, I believe this is a 24 MCC. Oops, can't see the label. I have to take the dorky screw off. Um, this is a ceiling mount version. This is a multi-candela, and it's white, which is kind of cool. Uh, this one was another alarm from the early 90s. This one's dated uh, New Year's of 2006, so that's why I've included it. Because you can still get a weatherproof version today from Wheel Lock, which is kind of cool. Um, this is a System Sensor L series, but this is a chime strobe. No lettering, so I think it's for general notification as well. CHSWL, there's the, uh, once again, the code down there. I think it's the four digit one. No idea what year it's from. But uh, yeah, I got lucky with getting this one. Another low frequency sounder. This one's in Edwards uh, Genesis. Not sure of the model. Actually, I'll set it down there. Not sure of the model, because they always list like four of them. And uh, it technically has a, a high and low volume, but you, for that, you have to cut a jumper, like kind of like the horn strobes with continuous encode three. So uh, yeah, and I didn't cut that, of course. I want it to be loud. So um, yeah, I'm a little flustered. I'm trying to do this quickly. This is a wheel lock exceeder. This is a model HS. This would technically be an HSW because it's white. This one's from 2014. And uh, yeah, very nice. I got it new in the box. Wheel Lock ZNS. This one is from 2006, which I believe is the year they uh, started producing these. So that's pretty cool. It's a first year model ZNS. It's a multi candela model. And obviously, like the rest of these alarms, set on continuous high volume. The last one here is a little more of a rare one. This one is an Amzico Selecta Horn Strobe or something like that. Yep, Selecta Horn Strobe. This was painted yellow, so I don't know what happened to this thing. That's what, I got it really cheap though. I think it's like SH24W, something like that. But uh, yeah, once again, this is one of those alarms where it's a little older than what you would currently get now, but it's still pretty cool. I've seen a few of these around still. So that's all the modern stuff. Now the vintage stuff. This is the cooler stuff, in my opinion. So I've paired them all up against each other and I have them laid out with what's gonna face against what. So uh, yeah. So we'll start with this one. This is a Simplex branded Bell RV4016. These were commonly rebranded by Autocall, IBM, and Simplex. Um, this one just happens to be a Simplex Bell. And it is a vibrating Bell, so that's pretty cool. And it's extremely loud. Simplex STR Bell. This one has a 4017-62, I believe, is the label for you. Yep. This one is probably one of the only mo vintage devices that's actually dated. This one's dated 1970. Um, there's an alarm I've owned for years you haven't seen in a while. Edwards 10-inch Adapter Bell, Model 340. It would be of 10N5, technically, with the modern uh, Adapter Bells. I have no idea how old this one is because uh, Edwards changed their logos like every few decades or something like that, so I would guess late 70s into the 80s with this bell. Here's a cool one, a Simplex 4051. I do not I do not have the 4050 light plate, unfortunately. I will eventually, but not right now. <laughs> this is an extremely loud little horn, and uh, yeah, once again, I'm trying to get a nice mix of devices in here. This is another one of mine I've owned for a while. This is a Firelight branded horn, model 550. 12 volts AC-DC, so it's a fan of rock and roll, and it takes a full amp to power. I got this one from my school. Simplex 2903 light plate with a 2901-9806. This one's probably one of the more recent alarms for the vintage ones. It's the older style strobe, as you can see, with the bigger circuit board. And uh, yeah, there's all your specs there. Um... This is a pretty cool one. This is a Simplex 2901-9846. I got that right, yeah. Not a 9838, because this one is the high output version at 0.065 amps. And it came with a trim plate too. 
I wanted to make sure it was a little more fair because the 9838 really isn't that loud of a horn. I have to be, for me, it's not that loud. I don't know about other people's experiences, but uh, yeah. So I decided to use the more rare high output one. Here is what's infamously known as amongst the loudest of the alarms. This is a National Time Model 411. Runs off 12 volts AC. And uh, yeah, it, like I said, this horn is extremely loud. I, th I think it is, I, th I forget who it was. Someone considered it the loudest of the alarms and I'd believe them. So for a chime, here's another rare one. This is one I just got from 1986. It's a wheel lock chime, model 712P24, something like that. Yeah, single stroke chime, so I'll have to uh, use the coded pull station for the single stroke stuff. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool alarm and if you, you can kind of hear what it sounds like there. This is a pretty scary alarm. <laughs> this is a Federal Signal Model 53 resonating horn. This is kind of what they use for hockey scoreboards. This is kind of what it sounds like. It has a big old plug in the back too. Yeah, this is a pretty cool device. 120 volts. Oh, there's the label. Try to set it down here. It's a little awkward to hold. But uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, yeah, here's one of my oldest alarms. You'll possibly my favorite, Edwards Adapter Horn. This is a model 384. Um, you'll recognize it as my channel logo. I've had this one for a long time and any chance I get to use it, I gladly will, because <laughs> it sounds awesome. This is its big brother here. This is a 372. Exactly the same, except this one has a huge projector on it. And uh, this is probably the biggest alarm that's here today. <laughs> um, also, this is 120 volts, just like that one. Simplex 4070 chime. This one is 120 volts. You probably, this one I just made a video of, of uh, connected to the coded pulse station. This one I chose specifically for the L series because they're both general notification. But uh, they definitely have fire alarm variants too. This is a pretty unique one. This is a, I think this is Faraday, yeah. Faraday 5910 horn, 120 volts. This is a pretty cool sounding horn. I. I quite like this one. And it has its own back box. Here's a newer Edwards Adapter Horn. This is an 874-N5, 120 volts. You could technically count this as one of the modern alarms because I'm fairly certain you could still buy these today. No idea what year it's from though. It's a little rusted, so it's gotta be at least 20 something years old. Probably, probably much older than that. And then the last of the Adapter Horns, this is a Model 310. This is the original adapter horn. This one happens to have a projector too. This one is also extremely loud. And uh, oh, I should also mention with these horns, the, uh, the ones with volume screws, they're all loosened all the way. So that way it's high volume for every single device here. And then last but not least, one of my other new favorites. This is an IBM 4030-1. This is, this one has a huge uh, horn body mount, whatever you call it here. There we go. Uh, yeah, draws a whopping 2.4 amps on 12 volts. This thing is extremely loud. And it's cool because it has a screen over the horn. Um, I would guess this is like a first version, a first generation model of the 4030, because it's a lot bulkier than more, the more common ones that collectors have. This one is definitely old. Uh, I would guess 1940s on this at least. And uh, yeah, you can see these in old school fire alarms videos. There's a bunch of schools that would have used these back then as well. So there you have it. There's the overview of the alarms. So uh, let's get to the part you've all been waiting for. All right, guys. So we're going to start out strong here with the 9333 and then the Edwards 340. So I'm going to do the simplex bell first, and then I will do the Edwards bell. So here we go. A little complicated how to do this, but yeah. Get the decibel reading here. Total of 116.5. That's pretty impressive. Reset the statistic. 
And now the Edwards bell. Holy crap, holy crap. Yeah, this thing definitely proved its loudness. 125 decibels even, from 10 feet away. Okay, yeah, on to the next device. The vintage alarms win this round. So to save myself some time, I'm not gonna mount every device, and these two will not stand up on their own. But regardless, we're gonna do the wheel lock bell against the simplex bell now, and we're gonna start with the wheel lock bell. Here we go. And we are sitting at 124 decibels. That's really impressive for what it is. We set that statistic and now the simplex bell. Interesting. 122.8 from the simplex bell. Not as loud as the wheel off. That's very surprising. So one point to the modern alarms. Okay, so this will kind of be the tiebreaker for modern versus vintage bells. And it comes down to the newest of the bells, the Potter PBA bell, and then the oldest of the bells, the simplex 4016. So without further ado, we're going to do the Potter first, and then the Simplex. So, here we go. Okay, uh, that one was actually kind of weak compared to the other bells. That did a 113.5. Reset. And now the simplex bell. Vintage bells for the win. That did 115 even. Now that's what I'm talking about. Well, for the bells in the group, that's pretty impressive on the wheel locks part, considering some of the infamous bells that's beaten in the decibel test. And currently, the 10 inch adapter bell is sitting on top. But we're gonna have to see what happens with the next set of devices, because now we're moving into the horns. And we'll see if the adapter bell can keep its title right now. All right, next up we got the Simplex 4051 versus the System Sensor Spectra Alert. Two collector classics. So, we're going to start off with the Spectra Alert and then the 4051. Here we go. Let me just say, there's no such thing as a quiet spectra alert. And we did a max of 122.4. So very impressive from it. And now, the 4051. Here we go. for the win with a whopping rating of 126.1 so I think that is currently the highest rating I have filmed so far so let's move on to the next ones so the current winner for the highest decibel output is gonna sit on that back box on the top there so the 4051 now gets a little thrown now <laughs> but until we find someone to beat him here's the 9846 and the almost commander 3 
So, here we go, starting with the Gentex. That did 120.7. And now, the 9846. Once I switch out the plugs. Here we go. Ooh, I didn't think it would win. 123.5. Not bad for what it was. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so quick update, guys. The 2903 with the 9806 horn here. Uh, the horn is dead. Didn't seem to like sitting on storage for a long time. So, unfortunately, I have to switch it out. Luckily, when it comes to vintage alarms, it's always good to have a second. This is the 2903 light plate. This is a rare dual bulb version. And the 9806 horn in this one isn't doing too well either. But uh, I've adjusted the volume screw, and it sounds better. But yeah, take the uh, result of this one with a grain of salt, because it may not be as good as it should be. All right, so that little hang-up set aside. Now we got vintage versus modern simplex. The 2903 light plate with the 9806 horn, and the 9425 True Alert. So, let's start with the True Alert. Oh, got to set the decibel reader. There we go. And here we go. And that was a whopping 120.1 decibels. Not the loudest, not the loudest horn. Definitely quite effective though. Set that. And now the 2903. Here we go. Man, that one's loud. Ooh, turn 23.3. Yep, definitely loud. <laughs> Alright, now things are gonna get serious. Edwards 874 adapter horn versus wheel off exceeder. So, without further ado, we'll do the exceeder, which is on high volume continuous, and the strobe's on 15 candela. Here we go. Holy cow, that was loud. Whew. And we had a max of 128.6. Man, this modern alarm was not messing around. And now the adapter horn. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I didn't think that one would be much louder. That was 130.7. These vintage alarms are not letting these newbies take over. That was loud. All right, so for the next one, I've decided I should wear hearing protection. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do the Wheel Lock MT against the Adapter Horn's predecessor. So, uh, yeah, as, as usual, start with the MT. Screamer. 132 decibels even. And now the adapter horn. Well, the modern alarms finally claimed a victory, but at this point, will it be enough? 
All right, so next up we have the biggest fire alarm, the Edwards 372 adapt horn, going against the Wheelock AS set on high volume continuous. The AS sounds a lot like the MT, so it should be a pretty similar result. And I have the 372 angled so the projector is projecting towards the decibel reader. So here we go, Wheelock AS. Despite sounding the same, wasn't as loud, but definitely one of the loudest. 128 decibels even. And now the adapter horn. Here we go. Whew. Very loud and very close to taking first place. 131.3. So, looks like the projector made a difference because it made it four decibels louder than the regular version. Which, if you understand how decibels, how they increase with each uh, decibel, that would make it about four times or 40 times as loud. It's a little strange how it works. All right, next up is the oldest of the adapter horns, the Model 310 with a projector, and the Wheelock ZNS. First year model ZNS. <laughs> Obviously, high volume continuous. So, here we go. And it looks like the strobe kicked the bucket on it. That's kind of sad. But it doesn't mean it's not quiet. 125.9 from that little guy. And of course now, the big adapter horn. Here we go. Whew. That one's loud to the ears, but it wasn't as loud as the other adapter horns, funny enough. That was 126.5. Weirdly enough, the oldest one is the quietest one. But I guess that shows its age, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm expecting one of these alarms to take first place here for the decibel readings. And it's probably not going to be the low frequency sounder. But uh, yeah, so uh, let's start with the wheel lock. Yeah, that sounds awful, but it's not the power supply. That's how it naturally sounds. It did a 124.8. So not bad. And now the one I've been dreading. The, vi the resonating horn. Here we go. Okay, I'm shocked. That did a 128.2. That was somehow quieter than two or three of the adapter horns, decibel-wise. Oh well, I guess it's really the sound the uh, sound it produces versus just the volume. That's what makes it more noticeable. All right, let's take a break from the projector horns and we'll do the Faraday 5910 horn and the Genesis low frequency sound which is permanently stuck on code three, unless you cut a jumper. So, here we go. And I think that one is now at the bottom of the list or near the bottom at 114.4. So, not exactly impressive, but these are designed for sleeping areas, by what I understand. So in that regard, it works perfectly. But uh, yeah, now time for the little Faraday horn. Yeah, 
That's about what I expected. Good and loud. 121.2. So yeah, not a very fair matchup because it kind of destroyed the Genesis. But uh, yeah. All right, now we got the supposed loudest fire alarm, the National Time 411, going against the Ceiling Mount Spectre Alert Advance. So let's see if that National Time horn can back up its claims. But first, the Spectre Alert. Man, that is the worst sound <laughs> on high volume continuous. But man, it sure showed its stuff. 132.5 from it. Now that's impressive. But, time for the vintage horn. Let's do it. didn't even beat the spectral alert. That was 129.5 from the National Time Horn. It's all right though. That sounds much better. All right, next up is the Firelight 550 Horn and then the Spectral Alert or the System Sensor L series. Um, a little note about the 550. It's not the healthiest one I chose, so unfortunately it's a little raspy, but uh, still quite loud. So first, the L-Series. Okay, not sure what that little power bump was, but that did a 128.6. Not as, not as loud as its predecessor. It is a little cheaper made though, so that's probably why. And now the Firelight Horn. Oop, decimal reader. And here we go. One twenty one point nine. Not bad, and looks like they wanted to come closer to say hi. <laughs> and here are the last of the horns: the IBM forty thirty and the Amzico Select a Horn Strobe. So uh, yeah, not much else to say. So first, the Amzico, which is set to high volume continuous electromechanical, which is kind of a mouthful. Oh yeah, the decibel reader. There we go. Here we go. That's actually pretty loud. I didn't think it would be. That did a 126.4. Yeah, come on. And now the IBM horn. Here we go. We got ourselves a new champion. All right, now we're gonna tone things down a little bit. So the second to last pair here is the Simplex 4070 chime against the System Sensor L-Series chime. So the L-Series chime I set to four second high. So it's like four chimes a second. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna do a separate video where I demonstrate the different features of it because it's a pretty cool alarm that I think a lot of collectors are ignoring. But anyway, here we go. Okay, I think the strobe was louder than that, honestly. <laughs> that was 100.4 decibels. So, uh, yeah by far the quietest alarm 
And for the simplex chime, I'm just gonna like simulate a march time with it. All right, here we go. Yeah, no surprise, that one was louder. 116.9. That's kind of funny, because that's actually louder than one of the actual alarms, like the Potter Bell. So that's pretty impressive for a little chime. All right, here are the last of the alarms. Two wheel-lock chimes. On the left is the 712 uh, P24, the original wheel-lock chime. And of course, the other one is the CH70 which is set to vibrating high volume. So, um, oops, got the wrong one. So we'll do the CH-70, here we go. Very peaceful. 104.8. Oh, the simplex chime was louder too. I'm sorry, 104.8, I don't think I said that clearly. And now, I'll be shocked if the old wheel lock chime even breaks 100. Here we go. It did break 100. 100.8. But yeah, that was a very, very quiet chime. All right, after all that tedious testing, we have our results. Coming in at 100.4 decibels and the quietest alarm, the System Sensor L Series chime. Then the wheel, old wheel lock, the CH70, the Potter Bell, the Exceder, the Simplex 4016, the 9333, the 4070. I'm pretty impressed with this little guy. The True Alert, the Commander 3, 5910, Firelight Model 550, Spectre Alert Classic, Simplex STR 4017, 20, Simplex 2903, 2901-9806, um, 2901-9846, um, the MBG-6, the Edwards Low Frequency Sounder, the Edwards 10-inch Adapter Bell, the ZNS, the 4051, Amzico Select Horn Strobe, which I underestimated, the Edwards 310 Adapter Horn, the AS, the Federal Signal Resonating Horn. These two actually tied the Wheelock Exceder and the L-Series Ceiling Mount, kind of had them overlapping. Here we go. Then the Edwards 384 adapter horn, the National Time 411, the Edwards 874 adapter horn, the Edwards 372 adapter horn. And then coming in third place, the Wheelock MT. Second place, the Spectralert Advance, which has been finally been dethroned by the IBM 4030, coming in at a whopping 133.4 decibels. I think that's what I said. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So it was a pretty interesting mix of loudest to quietest here. Like I said in the beginning, I wanted to get a good mix of alarms. That way I could have a more definitive answer. And to be fair, the environment that these were tested in, these are probably going to be louder results than what some other people will get. Because this is in my garage with a concrete floor and a wide open wall with plywood. So... There's really no sound deadening in here, so that's about as loud as these are going to get. <laughs> and um, not every alarm is the same, as I've proven with the Spectra Alerts versus the Wheelock 7000 series horns. Um, I had similar Spectra Alerts, and they were at different volumes. And that's because some were new, while others were old. So, uh, yeah. And with... Electromechanical horns and old buzzers and bells. Well, that's just even worse. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. 
As always, make sure you take these results with a grain of salt, but this is what my testing provided. And in general, horns with projectors are a little louder than the horns without projectors. <laughs> and bells are really quiet. And don't underestimate all the chimes. And uh, yeah. And I think another little note is why my little theory on why modern alarms have to be so high pitched and piercing is because there's no physical parts to them where they move, like these old buzzers and these bells. Let's say on a plaster wall you have them installed, you're more likely to hear the buzzer and the bell versus the, let's say, the exceeder or the true alert because these are going to vibrate the be the wall as well as the bell. So, uh, yeah, that's why these have to be louder. So that way the sound pierces through the walls better. That's kind of my theory on to why uh, modern alarms have such a high-pitched sound. But, uh, yeah. But I'm pretty happy with the result. I had a feeling this one would be loud, but I didn't think it would be taking home the gold. So anyway, guys, thank you for sticking through this. Thank you for watching. And thank you guys so much for getting me to 3,000 subscribers. It really means a lot to me. I know it was a fire alarm video and you guys wanted to see the ceiling fans. But uh, you know what? That will come soon. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.